Good morning. Thank you. Glad to see everyone this morning. If you'll be making your way on in to uh, take a seat, we'll go ahead and get started this morning. We're glad to see everyone here today, and we are especially happy to have visitors with us today. We hope that if you're visiting with us that you will uh, make a slow exit today and, and uh, give us a chance to get to know you a little bit. We'll uh, take some opportunity with proper social distancing, maybe outside, to, to get to visit with you a little, but we're glad that you're here. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we hope that you'll come back and see us every opportunity you have. Uh, if you haven't already gotten a bulletin, please be sure and get one, and uh, so that you'll know what all's going on here at Baker Heights. And we are going to go ahead and get started now with our, uh, who's going to do kids' time this morning? Larry. All right, we're going to let Larry take it away with the kids' time. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. How are y'all doing this morning? Kiddos? I'm looking for the kiddos. I see some interspersed. What was the first thing you thought about when you got out of bed this morning? Anybody? Breakfast. Breakfast. <laughs> Why did you wake me up, Dad? <laughs> I want to go back to bed. Wouldn't it be awesome if the first thing that you thought about when you got out of bed was God? Think about God. Today's Sunday. I get to go to church and worship God. I get to learn more about Him. Wouldn't that be exciting? And how very important that is that we keep that in front of us all the time. Parents, I can't tell you that enough. You know that. Keep the Lord in front of these kiddos constantly. We're going to be talking about a passage today in our sermon where they forgot about it. And about 30, 40 years later, they had forgotten God. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine, kiddos, forgetting God? I can't. They did. Well, part of it was not remembering God's Word. And so we want to sing a song that you know pretty well, the B-I-B-L-E, and I want all our adults to sing. Sing through your masks or sing without your mask, and let's sing the B-I-B-L-E. B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Going to give you one more chance to sing with some enthusiasm this morning, okay? The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. All right, thank you. First song this morning will be number 585, Soldiers of Christ Arise, which cannot be sung sitting down. So if you would please be standing as we sing. Soldiers of Christ Arise and put your armor on, strong in the strength which God Take every virtue, take every 
next song will be number 707. Following this song will be led in our opening prayer. To Christ be loyal and be true is better be unfurled and born aloft till it secured the conquest of the world. To Christ the Lord be true, for He will go with you. And Larry, the first thing I do every morning when I get up is thank God that I'm still alive. Amen. And pray that he'll let me make it through the day without being critical of anybody or, or finding fault with anyone. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for the privilege of talking to you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, there's no way that I can express to you the proper gratitude for all the blessings you give us. Your blessings are as numerous as the sands on the seashore. Please forgive us, Father, when we don't recognize the blessings that you give us and use them to the benefit of honoring you and helping our fellow man. Father, we're living in some trying times right now, as you know, and we thank you that we have the privilege of coming to you with these problems. We pray, Father, that you will help this virus that's going around to come to an end soon, that you'll help those who are working on solutions to find the, the, the source of medication that will help improve and do away with this virus forever and ever. And Father, we want to pray for our leaders of this nation. We pray, Father, that the riots and the protests and the anger will subside and that we will remember the blessing that you've given us and not try to destroy them. Please help those who are protesting and reviling and doing violent acts will come to their senses and see that what they're doing is not for the good of the country. Help us to learn to see each other's views and be able to compromise and be kind to each other. Help, Father, our leaders to be leaders and stand up for what's right and, and condemn that which is wrong. Father, there's no way that we
we can properly express our gratitude to you for the countless blessings you give us each day. And Father, I humbly pray for the forgiveness of my sins. For I fail you in so many ways, and I pray, Father, for strength and wisdom each day to do better. Help me be more patient, more understanding, and more kind, less, less judgmental, less critical, and be more complimentary and encouraging to those that come in contact with. Father, I love you. I praise you. You are where all blessings come from, Father. And, and help us to remember the price that was paid for us and to remember who we are and who we belong. In Jesus' name, I humbly pray. Amen. Next song is number 261. 261, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper together, we'll sing number 150. <clears throat> I traveled down a lonely road and no one seemed to care. The burden on my weary back had bound me to despair. I oft complained to Jesus how folks were treating me. And then I heard him say so tenderly, My feet were all so weary upon the Calvary road. The cross became so heavy, I fell beneath the load. Be faithful. The morning I can see, just lift your cross and follow close to me. I work so hard for Jesus, I often boast and 
and say, I've sacrificed a lot of things to walk the narrow way. I gave up fame and fortune, I'm worth a lot to thee. And then I hear him gently say to me, I left the throne of glory and counted it but loss. My hands were nailed in anger upon a cruel cross. But now we'll make the journey with your hand safe in mine. So lift your cross and follow close to me. Oh, Jesus, if I die upon a foreign field someday, t'would be no more than love demands, no less could I repay. No greater than for a friend to die. These are the words he gently spoke to me. If just a cup of water I place within your hands, then just a cup of water is all But if by death to living they can thy glory see, I'll take my cross and follow close to thee. In a world where we're besought with so many trials and concerns, in a world today where there is so much violence and the toppling of statues and the desecrating of memorials across our land, one thing that we can be forever mindful of, and never forget is an opportunity to remember something that cannot be toppled, and that is the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm mindful of the words of, of God himself. When he was told, to the prophet of God, say to the people, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts, to impress them upon your children, to talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. And when you lie down and when you get up. And then later on in that same chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 6. These words, in the future. When your son asks you what is the meaning of the stipulations and the decrees and the laws. The Lord our God has commanded you, tell him. We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent signs and wonders, great and terrible on Egypt and Pharaoh and the whole household. But he brought us out 
from there to bring us in and give us the land that he promised us on oath to our ancestors. So the Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God that we might always prosper and be kept alive as is the case today. And so today we are called upon to once again remember never to forget that we were brought out of slavery to be slaves to Jesus Christ to be his servants and to remember the great price that was paid on Calvary. Gentlemen, if you'll come forward. Join me with me in prayer, please. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the price paid on Calvary. As horrible as it was, Father, to know that because of the gift of your Son, we have the forgiveness of our sins. And we have the hope of everlasting life. Help us, Father, to never forget. And especially this morning as we partake of this of this last supper, of this very special communion feast, of this bread that reminds us of the broken body of our Lord and Savior. Father, help us to center our thoughts and our hearts on exactly that and never to forget how wonderful it is to be your children and how blessed we are to know your salvation. We pray this in Christ's name. Once again, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the blood that was shed on that old rugged cross to know that because of that blood, we have salvation. So, Father, today as we remember that sacrifice, help us to partake of this in a way that only brings glory to your name and reminds us of how wonderful it is to be your children. We pray in Christ's name.
because of the great love that our Father has bestowed upon us, and that we should be called his children, we have the opportunity to continue our love feast by lay buying in store while we've been prospered. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are since we again are so grateful for the blessings of this life, for the blessings of family, for the blessing of salvation, for this church, for this family. Father, we are so grateful for every blessing that we can ever think of and ever imagine. And so today, Father, as we have this opportunity to remember your love for us, that we also will convey our love to you by how we give back to you what is already yours. Help us to have loving, cheerful, and generous hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're using your songbooks and would like to mark the song of encouragement following the lesson, will be number 389. Number 389. And at this time, we will sing number 970, step by step. Following this song, we'll have our scripture reading and then our sermon. And if it's convenient, once again, would you please be standing as we sing. <coughs> Judges in chapter 2, beginning at verse 6. After Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each to their own inheritance. <clears throat> the people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua 
and of the elders who outlived him and who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, and they buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timnath Perez, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Gaash. After that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. <clears throat> then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. <clears throat> they forsook the Lord, <clears throat> the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the peoples around them. They aroused the Lord's anger because they forsook him and served Baal in the asterisk. Good morning, church. A little bit scattered still, but it's good to see your faces. Been a lot going on this week. I know uh, for many of you, you've kept up with some of the things that have been going on in, in our church family. Uh, Shelly Goodnight lost her father in the last days, and uh, they were down there for taking care of that and a funeral, and I know a lot of us were with you guys in prayer during all of that. Uh, Stuart Tyner's mother passed away yesterday here in town in hospice care, and so I'm sure that uh, they're going to be traveling down to where all of that's going to take place, funeral and all of that, this coming week. So we need to keep the Tyner family, please, in, in our prayers, especially this week, as they'll be doing a lot of traveling. Uh, it's been a great week. We've got some special guests with us today. That We have a lot of special guests today, but we have some guests with us today that were former co-workers of ours in Germany uh, with their children. The Everhart family, I hope you'll take the time to get to know them. Uh, great people. We've had a some really fun times the last few days. It's been a great, great time. One last thing that I needed to say before I get into my lesson today is uh, I just want to remind you that even if we're not meeting on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, there are, there are sermons or Bible studies that are available. They're shorter than a typical sermon uh, that are available online. Every Sunday night, we've been going through the book of that little letter of Colossians, together is a great study, a very practical study. Uh, so I hope that you'll tune in to that on Sunday evenings. And then on Wednesday evenings, a shorter message right now and until we start meeting again, uh, the 12th of July and after that, Lord willing, there is a series on Wednesday night about one another, about what it means that we belong to one another. What's that look like in the body of Christ? So I hope you'll tune in to those uh, and share those times, those studies together. I know this, uh, I hope you can say that this Old Testament study that we've been doing with the epic series and our Bible classes and the sermons that followed have been beneficial to you. Opened up some ideas and some thoughts about how practical those, those words are, the Old Testament words, and how many lessons we can gain from Old Testament stories. Whether we're looking at the books of Moses, uh, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, whether we're looking at the people of God going into the promised land and occupying that land that God had promised them in the book of Joshua, Joshua, or whether we're looking at, as we want to today briefly, the book of Judges. Now when you look at the book of Judges, I find it very interesting to ask people, what do you remember from the Judges, from Sunday school? What do you remember? And of course, Samson comes to mind, that strong man that could do anything unless you cut his hair. Or uh, Ehud, that left-handed cripple who lost his sword when he stabbed a, an evil king, lost his sword in the fat. Okay, it's an awful, gruesome story. But uh, you remember those things. You remember Gideon, that timid follower of God who, together with 300 men, and what did they have? They had torches and clay pots and, and trumpets. And, oh, I might add, the power of Almighty God and defeated with those 300 men the entire Midianite army. Well, the book of Judges, like a lot of the Old Testament, 
could have been written to describe our times. I don't mean stabbing fat kings or strong men that can lift anything. I'm talking about some of those lessons about forgetting what's important. Forgetting God. Forgetting who's important, really important in your life. Uh, a lot of people are still grossed out by the stories, and others dismiss them as a bunch of fairy tales and legends that we don't need to mess with. Uh, one writer called them despicable people doing deplorable thing. That describes the book of Judges pretty well. Uh, Tragedy tales about dysfunctional characters. At any rate, what we read is a selection of stories about the leaders that God selected from his people when they were sinking. When their ship was sinking. God chose these leaders to captain that ship. He wanted to be captain of the ship. They rejected him. So God chose leaders and put them into place. We call them judges who would lead the people for a while. Uh, and so it's important when our ship is sinking that we remember to have the right captain. It was a few weeks ago that uh, James Sumner in our Bible class showed a slide that portrayed this circle. Uh, we call it a cycle uh, of rebellion, I guess you could call it, in the book of Judges. It comes time and time and time again. Not only in the book of Judges, but all through the history of God's people. But you can see this so very clearly in the book of Judges. Israel is under pressure. They haven't followed God. And as we heard in the passage that was read this morning, after that whole generation had been gathered to God, that means they died, or gathered to their ancestors. Another generation grew up, knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. That's why I mentioned to the kids this morning, how could you forget God? How would it be possible for you to forget what God had done? I know the people who had actually witnessed the crossing of the Red Sea and the ten plagues and all of those wonderful miracles that happened in the, in the wilderness wanderings were dead now. How could they have forgotten God? It only took one generation. All along, God had promised his people what would happen if they did that, if they forgot him. But they didn't listen. They didn't listen. And so time and time again, we see in the judges that the people were oppressed. Here we see Israel was enslaved. If you want to jump in there to the, the circle of, of rebellion... Uh, the people were oppressed by foreign leaders. They would cry out to God. God would give them a judge, a leader, a captain for their ship that was sinking. And they would be restored. They would be delivered. The enemy would be defeated with the help of the judge. And they would serve the Lord for a time. didn't take long. A generation usually. And they were right back in the same boat. Following that cycle through all 12 of those judges probably list most of the kings after that. A generation away from apostasy. If there's nothing else you take home with you today, I want you to think about those words. We are a generation away from apostasy. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. People look around and you see, oh, the church is dying. Look at these empty churches. Look at the, the doors. People are closing. Churches are closing their doors. I heard last weekend a church that, that we just loved and served for many years in New Mexico. Uh, used to be 300 and some odd people. They just gave their building over to a denomination because they're down to 40. And they're meeting in another little place. How can that happen, we think? How can that happen? How can a people fall so far happens every day but you know what I find myself in this story you probably do too we've all been there haven't we times when we have we have rejected God maybe things are going so well for us that we just kind of get tuned into what's going on every day and we forget God we forget how good he's been to us things turn sour after that and then we start crying out to God to rescue us Things may start going well again. God rescues us. We're thankful. And then it all happens again and again and again. Well, I hope it, we can learn to see the symptoms and take care of the problem before it starts. To be honest, though, the book of Judges is not a book full of good guy stories. 
Uh, if you're looking for role models, you don't want to go to judges. <laughs> They're not the best. But one theme that seems to come to my mind time and time again as we look at all of those judges is, you mean, <laughs> you mean God could use somebody like that? You mean God could use somebody as wicked as some of those people were? Do you think, do you think God can use me? When I look out at this group today, I don't see a group. I see beautiful people. I don't see a bunch of misfits like in the judges, thankfully. But we are unique people, aren't we? We're all so different from, another, from each other. We've all got different gifts and talents, and we look differently. And I'm amazed and intrigued the older I get at how God can use people where we are and how we are. That's great. He can use you like you are. He can take you and your talents and your abilities and you know what, even your weaknesses and do great things if you'll allow him to. That's what we see happening in the Judges. In the Judges, the book of Judges. Well, I want us to look at a couple of passages. Uh, if you've got your Bible, it would be very, I almost said it behooves. We used that the other night in a... In a uh, a game we were playing in, at our house, and we just laughed all until we were in tears about me using the word behooveth. It behooves us. But it behooves us to read these passages in your own Bible with me. Let's look at Judges chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. The angel of the Lord went from Gilgal to Bochim and said, this is God speaking through the angel, and said, I brought you up out of Egypt and I led you into the land that I swore to give to your ancestors. I said, I'll never break my covenant with you, and you shall not make a covenant with the people of that land, but you shall break down their altars. Yet you have disobeyed me. Why have you done that? Why have you done this? You know, after the Israelites crossed the Jordan to take possession of their land, boy, they were, can you imagine how excited they were to take possession of those lands Farms that they had not plowed themselves, orchards that they had not planted, uh, all of this stuff that God had promised them, said, march in there, take advantage of it, but don't forget to cast out the people who are there. Don't forget to cast out the people of there, the, who are there, but many of them didn't. With time, and we're going to look at this in a few moments, with time they would say, well, yeah, we cast out some of them, but... But some of them, they could be useful. Let's make them our slaves. We'll be, we'll be the leaders and we'll make these people our slaves. They'll cut our wood for us. Maybe they can be our, our hired hands. And uh, the idols that they've got out in the country, well, they're not really gods at all anyway. But with time we know that they did make deals with them. They left a lot of the people there. And with time, Israel started to conform. Israel kind of forgot what God had said. Let's read on. After Joshua, we already heard this once, but after Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each to their own inheritance, and the people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the elders who outlived him and all who had seen, those who had seen all of the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Wow, what a slap in the face for God to know that they would turn like they did. After that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. And then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, served the Baals. Those were the gods of the people around them. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of peoples around them, and they aroused the Lord's anger because they forsook him and served Baal and the Ashtoreths. Wow, another generation who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done. You know, if you were to boil that down and think about it, and we're going to go to really who was at fault there in a couple of minutes, but they forgot his word. They forgot God's word. They didn't know his word anymore. They didn't know the things that he had said to them that were so very important, even the, those Ten Commandments. If you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1, you see how important it was that not only the parents, but the leaders passed that word on. These, I'm reading from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. These are the commands, decrees, the laws, the Lord your God directed me to teach you 
to observe in the land that you're crossing, the Jordan to possess. He had just given the Ten Commandments. Why, Moses? So that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I'm giving you so that you may enjoy long life. Then he goes in verse 4 to that hero, Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord's one and love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, all your strength. These commandments that I give you today should be on your hearts. Impress them, he says in verse 7. Impress them on your children. Talk about it when you're at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. You know, I like to look at that and chuckle a little bit and say, wow, how, what an extreme. You know, you wear a little box on your forehead or on your wrist or you write scriptures on your doorpost. I say, how fanatical is that? But you know, if that keeps us from forgetting God, let's do it. Whatever it takes to keep us for, from forgetting who God is and how important he is, let's do it. Impress it on the people around us. Impress it upon our children. The power of passing on God's word to the next generation. They didn't know his works. You know, in the churches of Christ, we have looked down at witnessing, like telling our story, and telling other people how, what the Lord means to us. And there's so much power in that. Telling people, witnessing to what the Lord has done in our lives, the way the Lord has worked. They forgot it. And look what happened. And thirdly, they didn't know his wars, really. They didn't know the, the battles that God had fought for them in Egypt and all along the way. And we can forget as well the battles that Christ has forgotten or that Christ has won for us, fought for us, and won for us. They can be forgotten if we're not careful. That's why it's so very important that we remember every week when we come together what Christ has done for us, every week, the importance of that. Maybe this is a way we can look at it. They compromised on that spiral to go down in that sinking ship. Well, let's let those people stay on our lands. That could be our slaves. I imagine they could work for us, you know. Uh, oh, their gods are nothing. Before you know it, they're conforming to the people around them. Those influences that they had caught many, caught many, caused many people to forget God. They they were content to take those lifestyles that they saw around them, to worship the gods that they saw around them, everything that those people had. They compromised, they conformed, and after a while they were just content with it. I've been there. I'll bet you have too. And woke up one morning and found yourself far from God. That's what these people did. Well... Another generation that did not know God. Who dropped the ball? Who dropped the ball? The passage I read in De Deuteronomy was pretty clear, wasn't it? Don't forget God. Remember Him. Impress it on your children. Pass it on to the next generation. And the next generation show that all of those generations will remember who I am and what I've done for you. Who dropped the ball? Well, I kind of think it was probably individuals every one of us is responsible aren't we for remembering what God has done in our lives for bringing that up for praying like Hannah did to to remind ourselves of who God is to worship together because we gain strength from that don't we I mean I love to sing those songs of praise that we've sung today and to to pray together with my family I know we all face the front and that we're all separated, so it's a little bit individualistic. But there's power in that unity that we have here. There's power in being together. Starts with the individual, goes to the family leaders. As we've said so many times, families, keep your children aware of who God is and what He has done. Don't compromise when it comes to the faith of your kids. And don't let the world get such a hold on you that you forget how important God is. Congregational leaders had failed in Judaism, in Israel. They all dropped the ball. The individuals, the family leaders, the congregational leaders, all of them dropped the ball when it came to remembering who God was, the national elders of, of, the, of the Israelite people. 
drop the ball, and so we find God's people in a sinking ship. We cannot allow that to happen in our lives. And just a couple of things to remember. Let's not compromise the truth, ever. Never compromise the truth. Leadership, individuals, family members, never conform to the world. Don't conform to the world and those things that, that influence and eventually we become content with that. And that's good enough. That's good enough. I go to church on Sunday morning. Oh, that's good enough. I don't need to study my Bible. I don't, need to, I don't need to pray to God. I go on Sunday. Hey, that's enough. I get my recharge for the week. Don't ever be content with good enough. I want us to strive every day of our lives to never be that people about which it could be said. That generation arose. They didn't know God anymore. They didn't know what he had done. We have a great, great blessing to have one another. We need to lean on one another. We need to pray for one another. We need to stand beside one another and help one another work forward. If it's only individuals, we'll never make it. We need each other in a big, big way. We're going to do that. Amen? Amen. All right. We want to offer an invitation this morning to anyone who has something that needs to be prayed about or if you'd like to, to ask for strength, prayer from the church, or if you have something that you need to get right in your life, or if you'd like to become a Christian and be immersed for the forgiveness of your sin, we stand ready. If you're watching at home and you need prayer, I've mentioned this, and I'll mention it for the next couple of weeks, we would be more than happy to pray with you, pray for you, call the office, and, and we'll do that. We'll do that. We want to be there to help you in any way that we can. Well, let's stand and sing this song together and think about what we've heard this morning. If you have a need, come while we sing this song. In the narrow road, would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love will fill your soul and you will see twice best. For him to have his way with thee. Would you in his kingdom find a place of constant rest? Would you prove him true each providential test? Would you in his service labor always at your best? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see twas best for him to have his way with thee. Please be seated.
morning, uh, Tony McAdams has come forward, and she has this on her heart today. Um, this has been a hard time for all of us, and for me. It's so easy to get so busy and forget what I'm really supposed to be doing. I was feeling just that way today, far from my Lord. I know where he is and where I am, and I just need encouragement, and I know so many others do as well. So let's get together and do, I'm sorry, that's the, and do it however we can. Let's go ahead and go to our Father in prayer for Tony. Father, so often we find ourselves so far from you and we look out to you and we know that you are near. But Father, in, in our own hearts, we, we feel the separation that our own lives and our sin causes us to feel. And Father, we know that our Lord Jesus died so that we could be close to you, so we could be reconciled to you. Father, we know you are near. We know you care for us. And Father, we just ask your forgiveness. We, we get so caught up in our own lives, and, and we do forget that your magnificence is all around us, and we are part of your plan to achieve the reconciliation of people to you. And Father, be with Tony this week. Help her to... Help her to feel your presence. Help her to reach out to you in prayer. Help us to help her to focus on you. Father, this is my prayer not only for Tony, but for all of us, Father. We we all need more of you and less of us. Forgive us all, Father. Be with us this week. Help us to focus on you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Speaking of that, since that seems to be on a lot of people's hearts in, in these times, um, I do have a couple things I want to encourage you. This week, um, read Psalm 34, among other things, but, or find a favorite scripture and meditate on that scripture. We need to fill ourselves with the Lord. And from one of my favorite chapters in Scripture, Philippians 4, beginning in verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Um, a couple things we need to cover for businessy things. Um, the budget, a current financial statement, is on the um, on the ship table. That's that word on the table and back. Um, so if you would, um, if you're interested in that, please grab a copy. It does show the current state of our finances, as well as the budget for this year. All right, have a few cards that we want to uh, go through, prayer requests, and a few more announcements. So these are things to remember this week as we continue to pray for the good nights, for the loss of uh, Shelly's dad, and the Tyners with the loss of Stuart's mom. Um, Charles Goodnight had, had, has these requests, or wanted to make this known. His daughter... Uh, Leanna Flores has been diagnosed with COVID, so we want to be praying for her. And also, uh, last night, um, Daryl Goodnight, Charles's brother, uh, had a had a medical situation. is currently in Hendrick. Julia McPherson will be traveling to Temple tomorrow for a doctor's appointment. We want to be praying for her for safe travel and for a good report. Janet Newman has asked us to remember Janet Massey is having neck surgery on Tuesday. We pray that all goes well and that she has a speedy recovery. 
Janet's also asked us to pray for Zach Miller, who has been, who is the son of her best friend in Kansas and uh, has also been diagnosed with COVID-19. Want to remember all those in our family um, who are sick and suffering. So if you will, go to the Father with me in prayer again and we'll be dismissed. Father, you are a comfort in, in all our lives. And we know that when we reach out to you, that you hear us and that you respond to our prayers and that you answer them. We know that prayer is a, a great tool, a powerful tool. And Father, we just, we pray and ask that you will prick our hearts so that we will spend more time in prayer with you. Father, we pray for Zach Miller, who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. We also pray for Leanna Flores in the same situation. Father, we also pray for all those in our local community, those that we know as friends and family that have been suffering from this virus. And, and again, Father, we, we pray that this will pass away, that we will, there will be a treatment, a vaccine, something so that uh, we can return to our normal lives. Father, we pray for Janet Massey and her neck surgery. We pray all goes well. We ask you to guide the hands of those that are seen to her and that she will have a speedy recovery. We also pray for Daryl Goodnight as he is in the hospital. We pray that uh, they will be able to determine what his problems are and that they will provide solutions and that they will give him the care that he needs. Also pray for Julia as she travels to Temple that uh, she may have a safe trip and, and have a good report there. We pray for the Tyner family in this time of their grief. Father, be with all of them as they travel, as they suffer from the loss of a, of a mother. And we just ask you to help us to reach out to them and provide them with those things that we can especially our own encouragement. Father, we pray that you will be with each of us this week. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy. Father, we thank you so much for all your gifts, so many of them that we, we fail to mention every day because we take so many things for granted. Thank you, Father, for your care for us. Help us to reach out to you. Help us to remember you in all our ways and to walk with you each and every day. Be with everyone as we travel home. Give us safe travels. Be with us this week and help us to be your lights in this world and to attend to that ministry of reconciling others to you. Father, we, we just know that you have done so much for us and help us to spread that message throughout the world. Forgive us as we, when we fail you. Help us to repent and turn away from ourselves and turn to you. Father, thank you so much for Jesus, his sacrifice. And Father, just thank you for your love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.